Hi, my name is Kristen and I'm doing my master's at the University of Ottawa with uh, Keiko Hattori. And we're collaborating with Stuart Hamilton from the Ontario Geological Survey to uh, work on a project on forest rings in Northern Ontario. Forest rings are depressions in tree growth in a circular pattern, only visible from the sky. Little is known about the specific causes of these geographic phenomenon, but Kirsten is looking for the answers. In a few frantic days, we packed up everything we needed for two weeks in the field and pointed the truck north heading to our home base of Hearst, Ontario. After a long rainy drive, we reached Hearst and began to plan our next weeks in the field. For Kirsten's study, she was focusing on four individual forest rings, each one very remote and difficult to reach. Every day we packed the truck with the equipment we needed for the day and headed out. And that's how you test diffusion samplers. <laughs> Is it sealed? Yeah, it's good. To reach the rings, we would drive down extensive logging roads, sometimes an hour before we could go no further with the truck. So we just arrived at the road ring and we're packing up for the day and we're gonna head out. We've got about a 40 minute quad ride ahead of us and we'll get to our site. Making sure not to forget anything essential, we would pack up the quads and then head out for the second leg of the trip. Across streams, swamps, bridges and fields, we drove deep into the northern Ontario forest. Bisecting each of these forest rings, a number of monitoring wells have been previously installed. These monitoring wells were the sites we were looking for. Once we arrived, it was time to set up and sample. So, here we are at our first well of the day, after our long ATV ride in. And this is actually a background well, so it lies outside the ring, the, the forest ring. And there's a gore absorber and two diffusion samplers in this well. And so we're going to analyze them for gas and methane, or hydrocarbons, right? Gore absorber? Uh, gore absorber is hydrocarbons and diffusion samplers is methane. Yeah. But we're also hoping to get a uh, water sample out of here. Yeah, we're going to try to get a water sample. So this is a comparison to all those wells that are within the ring. So we're just outside the ring right now. So anyway, this is our setup for, for the next. Uh, half hour or 40 minutes, we'll do our thing. Let's do it. From the samples taken, Kirsten will be able to conduct a chemical analysis back at the lab and be able to observe any trends in soil and water chemistry between the area outside the rings and within the rings. This study will provide a better idea of what causes these unique forest rings to form where they do. So once we removed the uh, diffusion samplers in the Gore Arbor, um, we measured the water level as well as take uh, two water samples from the well. And we've attached two more diffusion samples to the fishing line. And we're gonna put those back down the well hole and we'll come back and pick them up in the fall and get another air sample. Working with Kirsten on her project was challenging, but also a very fun experience. What do you smell? I smell hydrocarbons. <laughs> Whoa, there's holes everywhere. You want to hear my wolf oh. <laughs> Yes. Everybody warned me about bears when I came up to Hearst to work with the OGS. But I think it's the wasps that are the bigger problem. I got stung in my hand and now look at it. Oh, 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 oh! We both lost a lot of blood to mosquitoes over those two weeks, but it didn't bother us considering all the other impressive wildlife we saw. It really is quite a unique experience to work in such remote conditions, knowing that you're the only human for miles around. Once all the sampling had been completed, we said goodbye to Hearst, our home away from home, and set off back to the office in Sudbury.